In his mortal life, Jesus Christ was a loving judge, uncommonly wise and patient. He is known in the scriptures as the righteous judge, and his counsel to us is to also judge righteous judgment, and to put your trust in that spirit which leadeth to do good and to judge righteously. To help us judge as he does, he gave this counsel to the Nephite Twelve. Ye shall be judges of this people according to the judgment which I shall give unto you, which shall be just. Therefore, what manner of men ought ye to be? Verily I say unto you, even as I am. We sometimes forget that when he gave the counsel to be as he is, it was in the context of how to judge righteously. The natural man and woman in each of us has a tendency to condemn others and to judge unrighteously or self-righteously. It even happened to James and John, two of the Savior's apostles. They were infuriated when the people of a Samaritan village treated the Savior disrespectfully. And when they saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of, for the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. However, compassion doesn't nullify the need for discipline. The word discipline comes from the Latin word discere, to learn, or discipulus, learner, making a, di making a disciple, a student, and follower. To discipline the Lord's way is to lovingly and patient patiently teach. In the scriptures, the Lord often uses the word chasten when speaking of discipline. The word chasten comes from the Latin castus, meaning chaste or pure, and chasten to purify. The proceedings of a righteous judge are merciful, loving, and redemptive, not condemning. Young Joseph Smith was disciplined with a four-year probation before obtaining the golden plates, quote, because you have not kept the commandments of the Lord, end quote. Later, when Joseph, Joseph lost the 116 manuscript pages, he was disciplined again. Though he was truly remorseful, the Lord still withdrew his privileges for a short season, because whom I love, I also chasten that their sins may be forgiven. While few of us will be called to be common judges, the principles of righteous judgment apply to all of us, especially to parents who have a daily opportunity to use these principles with their children. To effectively teach a child is the very essence of good parenting and to lovingly discipline the very essence of being a righteous judge. President Joseph F. Smith taught, if children are defiant and difficult to control, be patient with them until you can conquer by love, and you can then mold their characters as you please. I like this variation of a Goethe quote, the way you see a child is the way you treat them, and the way you treat them is what they will become. To remember a child's true identity is a gift of foresight that divinely inspires the vision of a righteous judge. President Thomas S. Monson has taught us, never let a problem to be solved become more important than a person to be loved. How very vital that principle is in becoming righteous judges, especially with our own children. There is only one way to judge righteous judgment as Jesus Christ does, and that is to be as he is. Therefore, what manner of men and women ought ye to be? Verily I say unto you, even as I am. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.